Welcome back everyone. Today I have a video in which I'm going to talk about how Iron Man's have changed my perspective and my playstyle within Fire Emblem itself. This isn't really a video about Iron Man's itself, it's more of a video on how ever since I've started doing them, I've noticed a significant change in my playstyle and in the tactics that I adopt in order to complete the games. In Iron Man is when you have to play the game and you cannot reset for any circumstance. Basically if you get a game over, it is over. If a person dies, they remain dead during the entire playthrough. So because of that, it's very unforgiving in terms of what needs to be accomplished in order to complete them. Before, I used to play more completionist than any other style, which is where you basically try to get all the objectives, complete all the side missions, recruit all the characters, get all the conversations, yada yada yada. Sometimes, this is actually a lot harder than Iron Man's because of the necessary risks you have to take or how difficult it is to complete all the objectives before the chapter is over. Each one of them has their own merit. In an Iron Man, this isn't something that you're necessarily going to go for. Because of that, you want to secure your run instead of maximizing risk and having to start over again. Let me just make it clear though. In my Iron Mans, I do not grind. I do not farm support. I do not use glitches. I don't do any of those things because I believe it goes against the nature of the game itself. My Iron Mans are basically me trying to complete the game as quickly as possible and as safely as possible without abusing anything at all. Because of this, I've noticed two things in particular that are very, very apparent now in my playstyle. Before, I used to use a lot of zero to hero characters in which you would just train somebody up so they would be perfect and doing a really good job. But the thing is, ever since I started to do Iron Man, I've started to value bases a lot more than I used to value them. This is because with bases, there isn't really a chance of you getting screwed over by RNG. Some characters, they will grow and they may get a point here, may get a point there, and they will be able to meet specific thresholds because of that. But if they fail to get those points, or if they struggle to get those points, it becomes very difficult for them to contribute. Whereas characters that just have the bases that are necessary to complete the games are much more viable for me. There's also the fact that sometimes you don't need somebody to just wreck the whole game and have overkill attack. You just need someone that does just enough. You just need a unit that reaches that speed threshold, or you just need a unit that can warp someone for one chapter, or you just need somebody to carry someone. Two characters that fall into this category are something like Ike and Har, in which with a couple of speed boosts, they actually will now double the majority of enemies during their part of the game and be able to trivialize that. Or a character like George in Shadow Dragon, who with one boost of attack can actually start one-shotting dragons with the Parthia, which he is almost there to use anyway. Like He can just use it and he's very useful even though his stats aren't that impressive. There's another thing that's happened during my playthroughs. I've noticed that I started to appreciate one stat in particular a lot more than others. My first attempt at my Path of Radiance Iron Man Maniac mode was a success, duly because of the fact that I abused the calves to no end. I basically did a bunch of hit and run strats to go in and out and was able to succeed. However, when I saw other people playing it, I noticed they did a couple of different strategies using generals. And in this case, Gatri and Braum were one of the better units in their army because they didn't necessarily kill a lot, like the Cavs did, but they did manage to hold off groups of enemies without suffering any damage whatsoever and be able to allow the main army to move through without having to do all that combat. This is something that never had occurred to me before. I never even thought about that. But when I saw other people using it, I was thoroughly impressed. I was like, wow, this is, this is a really good strategy. Because even though I didn't use it and I probably wouldn't use it in a future playthrough, it still is interesting to see how that defense threshold meets a certain level so that the enemies can't really be threatening at all. And this is really useful in Iron Man. Units that have high defense or that are bulky can take multiple successive rounds of combat and can survive consistently against the enemies. And this is something that is really, really valuable to me now in Iron Man's when I play because I notice just how dangerous it is to get a squishy on the front line and get demolished. Because of that, Squishy units in Iron Man's tend to be a lot more babied and they don't get as much combat in because they are just a liability. They can die. So I would rather prefer units that are more consistent things like Deke, like uh, Joshua. Units that have high speed uh, but good HP as well so they can soak. Or just guys that have insane defense like even Gilliam is a good option in that regard. But these are just characters and different ways to approach them but it's something that I've noticed in different in my playstyle now too. The second thing that occurred that is really, really apparent to me is that I started valuing role compression a lot more than I did before. One thing I noticed is that thieves to me are basically only deployable in moments that I actually need them to do stuff. 
every other time I can just use a chest key and a door key and put it on a calf who has even better mobility, I will do that. I will prefer to do that. It is better for me to do that. Because the thief will always be a liability due to his low HP and low combat stats anyway. Because of that, I've kind of shied away from thieves altogether and just really prefer units that can just do combat and carry door keys and chest keys because it just feels like the more safer option. Another thing I noticed too is roll compression is important, meaning that characters that only heal right off the bat are not really interesting to me anymore. Priests and clerics, they're not really that good. Troubadours are different because they have the cab and they have the movement, so that's that's a different thing. But for the most part, I actually tend to prefer units that are mages and then early promote them so that they get access to magic and then we can just push forward and demolish stuff and they have two different roles. Because you don't always need to heal and you don't always need to attack. But having a unit that can do both at once means I can then open up a new slot for another unit. Be it another calf, be it another combat unit, be it another flyer, whatever. I can always bring another unit in that can assist, or even a thief, like I said before, for a map. Instead of having to bring a priest that only heals, or a mage that only magics. And it's just not something that I appreciate anymore. I know I said there were two things that I noticed a lot, but there's another thing I did notice not as much because I used to do this before, but now my pre-planning game before I go into any map in an Iron Man is absolutely cracked. I will sit there and look at every single unit, all the status effects, everything, just to make sure that I have a reasonable way to deal with the enemies at that point in time. If you do not have a solution to all the problems on the map, you could get checkmated. And that means the end of the run. So because of that, I now zoom into every single map and really pay attention to what is necessary in order to beat it. This even helps out with drafts race as well. It's an interesting thing because doing this has actually helped me be a better player overall because now I don't waste as much real lifetime failing miserably on a map because I already kind of pre-planned the route that I want to take to succeed before it even happens. Ultimately, I want to say this. Doing Iron Man's has actually made me a much better player. Not necessarily because they are hard, but because the mindset of completing maps without resetting actually allowed to save a lot of real lifetime situations and allow me to have a better enjoyment of the game. Let's be honest, resetting multiple times isn't the funnest of experiences. So the least amount of times you have to reset, the more satisfying it is for me to complete the game. Because of that, even when I play in regular playthroughs, I apply the Iron Man mentality to it so that I can basically try to tackle the maps in specific ways so that I can avoid resetting the most amount of times as possible. Of course, if I'm doing completionist, there may be some runs that I have to bank on a crit or be a little risky, but those are few and far in between, and the pre-planning beforehand has allowed me to be a better, more consistent player in general. The reason why I'm basically bringing this up is that I'm trying to advise you that you should maybe try it one day. Try an Iron Man, even if it's a normal mode. It's really going to help your experience in the Fire Emblem tactics, and I guarantee you, you'll wind up enjoying it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And what do you guys think? Do you think that Iron Mans have changed your experience when you've played as well? Or do you want to try an Iron Man? Or, or let me know down in the comments below how exactly this has impacted you and what you feel about how Iron Mans play out and the different experiences that you've had while you've been playing. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you very much. And you guys have a wonderful day.